can you feel it in the air? Happening again. Coming back soon. New season. Dozen or so new episodes. About how history helps understand strangeness of now. Here's a preview of the upcoming season. So sure, diamonds are sparkly to look at, and they're awesome at cleanly cutting tile, or accidentally scratching up your car windows. But Adam Smith understood that you can't make coffee with diamonds, and they can't slippery up your slip and slide. And you certainly can't baptize a baby with them. Carbon paper. Carbon paper? Yes, carbon paper! Thomas Jefferson would have swallowed his own elbow for a couple of packs of carbon paper. At this point, savvy listeners will probably be wondering, why on earth are we walking on a pie crust? The answer has to do with that ziggurat we were just talking about. And with the Industrial Revolution. Casually throw the word usufruct into a conversation today at lunch. Then carefully observe your lunch buddy's reactions. And you'll see what I mean. And that this strangeness, this remoteness of the past, is the aspect of history that many non-professional pop history content creators tend to get most wrong. Trained academic historians understand that much of what feels intuitively normal about the past is not, in fact, normal at all. Not to be confused with the Hundred Years' War, which lasted 116 years, the Thirty Years' War lasted exactly 30 years, from 1618 to 1648, and was therefore much less confusing to future history students. Except when it comes to understanding the reasons why they were actually fighting. That part can feel to present-day readers like it might as well have come from the exoplanet Thestius that orbits the star Pollux some 34 light-years away in the Gemini constellation. In other words, the absolute best representatives of what we today call the legacy of the West actually lived in what we now call the East, or in the case of Alexandria, in what is today known as the Global South. So how do we explain all of this geographical confusion? Did all of these self-proclaimed Westerners manage to simultaneously turn off their location services on their metaphorical phones? Or is there something else going on here? Perhaps the most important inventions and discoveries of that period aren't about those cool museum pieces at all. One of the main lessons of Döbereiner's lamp may well be that there's a whole field of gassy history just waiting to be written. All of which means that before you start getting all internet angry and joyfully leaping onto the nearest social media pig pile, it's worth realizing that these two labels, which seem at first to be opposites, me nearly the same thing. And hey, to be sure, I understand that listening to a historian of weirdness, talking with historians about how weird it is that people like history, but do not necessarily like historians, sounds like it might just be a little too meta for a podcast episode. But there's no need to freak out. I'm a professional historian, and I've been trained to talk you through how professional historians have been trained to talk you through how professional historians talk you through things. My name is Doug Sofer, and I'm a weirdo. Just. Like. All that, and much more. Coming soon. Patience appreciated. Lots of stuff to do. Hang tough worth the wait. Thanks for listening. Mm